Hello everybody, my name is Amul Patel, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where every day, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we talk to people in the startup world and startup founders. I'm joined with... Hey guys, I'm Jeff Pelton down here in San Diego. And today we've got a great interview with Mike Coella uh, from AdBeat.com. Mike uh, has been in the uh, ad space for several years. He started off as a big-time affiliate, making thousands of dollars a month uh, selling other people's products. And uh, he felt like he wanted to know what other people were doing in advertising on the web so that he can sell other products besides the one that he was selling. And so he scratched his own niche and built AdBeat the software that uh, Jeff has pulled up on the screen. So Jeff, tell us more about uh, AdBeat. Yeah, so it's great you know, that he was building a product to solve his own problem. We always love to see that. Yeah. And uh, really, it's an impressive um, product. You know, the you know, as a technologist, uh, if it's basically a, a web spider or crawler that's going out to all uh, of the top websites, scraping what they're advertising uh, so that they can collect all of this intelligence on uh, what advertisements are running on what sites and what ad networks and gives you a lot of detail and reporting and information I can kind of uh, briefly show you some up on the screen. Uh, we get them to give us a product demo so you can see all of it uh, in detail uh, later in the show. Yeah, so um, a lot of startups, you know, don't have a lot of money and, uh, you know, are trying to find a way to get customers. Um, you know, content marketing, inbound SEO is usually the preferred method, you know, because people think, you know, I, I just have to make that effort once and it pays dividends through the next several months to up to a year. But it is un... Um, unpredictable and it can spike and die down and it, and there's really it's really hard to sort of test to see if things are working because you have to wait for the articles to be indexed and for the traffic to start coming so paid advertising is a great way for any small startup especially with Google Display Network to get some people in the, you know coming to the site checking it out and seeing if your site works and see if the landing pages work and that kind of thing and he goes through AdBeat and actually we go into several small SaaS providers to see how they're doing Right, Jeff? Yep, he gives us a demo. Uh, I mean, really, the ways that you can use this are limitless. Uh, they, you really have to look at the tool, see what it does, and apply it to uh, your own use case, where you're at in your business or company, or whether you're an affiliate or advertiser uh, or whatever you're doing. Uh, there's so many ways that you can use this information. It's really just a, a comprehensive, in depth uh, reporting tool that you can find out so much information uh, about what's out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and you almost get like sort of the best uh, practices also for marketing in terms of the marketing yeah. funnel. So some of these advertisers are spending millions of dollars a month, and we looked at one of them, one of them I think Trulia, and we looked at the way they designed their site and how they blocked off the content until you got the email. So a lot of this, some of the top advertisers are using, um, you know, a pop up that says "Give us your email before you're even able to check out the site." And so we get to we through AdBeat we discovered them and we discovered the landing pages that they were using, and it was really yeah. great. Yeah, I love that part. Actually, one of the things Mike mentioned was the how important the funnel is, right? So I think that uh, isn't just the uh, the copy or where the advertisement is, but uh, where the advertisement goes to, the landing page, how they set up their landing page, and like you said, that can even uh, if they if they capture your email address, that can lead to a, a sequence of emails that you get. You know, so the the marketing is really com uh, in depth and. Uh, it's a great tool to find out, like you said, with these people who are spending millions of dollars, what they're doing and what the best practices are. At least so you don't make uh, major mistakes to, at your first go round. Exactly. You don't necessary money uh, and time. Exactly, exactly. As a small startup, you want to sort of look and try to uh, copy from the best, and that's what AdB shows. It shows what people are doing and what's working. Yep. And it also you can get ideas for copywriting and how to write your ads and all that stuff. So it's a great tool. Please check it out. Um, and uh, if you like what you're hearing today, uh, check out some of our previous episodes at smokinghotcoffee.com and also email us at info at smokinghotcoffee. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, please guys, uh, go find the subscribe button on our website and you can find us on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, the rest of them, iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, please subscribe, tell your friends if you found this uh, interview useful. Yeah, absolutely. And so with that, let's cut to our show. Hey Mike, how you doing? Thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, I'm glad to be here. It's our pleasure to have you. Thanks. Pleasure yeah. to be here. So I, I've been sort of admiring you from afar. I've been a big fan of uh, what you're doing with AdBeat and the whole media buying as competitive intelligence. I've been on uh, several of your webinars that you give, and they're epic, man. Some of these webinars last like three hours. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, for better or worse. 
Yeah. Dude, they can it, run a little long. It's amazing the information that you share and um you know, even if people don't subscribe to uh, AdBeat and do any media buying, it's just the amount of knowledge when it comes to buying traffic and, and advertising, uh, you know, you, you give the nitty gritty, and I really appreciate that. Cool, yeah. I mean, we always try to make the webinars, you know, valuable to anybody, whether they're interested in purchasing AdBeat or not. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. I love the fact that you go in all the different markets and and what people are doing in these individual markets. So before I get too far down that rabbit hole, t tell us a little about yourself and why you built AdBeat and give us a little bit about that background. Okay, um, so I I used to be an engineer, uh, so we'll maybe start there. But um, sure. very quickly, I decided that isn't really what I was real passionate about, and I started looking into online marketing and I learned a little bit about pay-per-click and uh, I started um, started doing online marketing and selling products as an affiliate uh, with paid advertising so with with media buying of, of one sort or another um, which just means buying you know banner ads and that sort of thing that are just kind of show up all over the internet right and um, and then you know I realized there was a need for a product um, like Adbeat there just wasn't anything out there like this so we started building it um, somewhat naively. Uh, I thought that it was like a three-month project, and you know, would cost maybe a few tens of thousands of dollars. Right. Um, and here we are, you know, I don't know, close to four and a half years later or something, and um, still building out the the product. So <laughs> wow. um, it's come a long way since then, but well, uh, yeah, now you know now it's a service that you know I, I built it for myself, you right. know, basically initially, but it's you know it's a so it's a SaaS offering now. So let me get this straight. So you had an itch that you're scratching for yourself, and, and Very tell, much so. tell tell us about that itch. So it's basically like what is going on. The the question is what is going on with advertising just all over the internet, and how do you figure that out? You know, how do you know what's, if you want to know, even if you, you know, say you're just a, an opportunity seeker, for instance, which at the time, that's sort of how I would kind of classify myself, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to go into a business that I knew I could, I could run primarily through paid traffic as a, as a acquisition channel, okay. right? Right. And so, you know, how do you even know what are the businesses that work that way? You know, what what markets are working? Um, who's using a lot of advertising to drive their businesses? Because some businesses are almost entirely driven through paid advertising. Right. You know, um, and others are not at all. You know, it just doesn't work for various and, reasons. And you determine right. that by the length of time that these people are paying for the traffic. Is that correct? Uh, that's that's sure. That's 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 one way. But you need to be a little smart about it too, because if you see an advertiser like Groupon is a great example, right? Yeah. And you know that they've raised you know hundreds of millions of dollars. Exactly. Yeah. And it's kind of like this pipe dream about how you know eventually they're not going to need to be spending money on advertising and everything's going to be rosy. Right. Um, you have to pay attention to what's really going on there, but you know you can generally pick those companies out. And you know the companies that are just they're just making it work. And so if you're paying for advertising for months on end, you know chances are you're smart enough to turn that off if it's not working, right? Right. Right. So yeah, that's really the the indicator. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're looking at companies that are running uh, long campaigns, and then you think to yourself, wait, wait a second, these guys are spending a lot of money on these ads. Clearly. Uh, the ROI is there, the revenue is there. And then you applied that to affiliate programs. So can you give us some uh, markets that you were successful at earlier on? Early on, I was successful with a product. That, uh, it's just an ebook product called Truth About Abs. Okay. Uh, that um, a friend of mine now, uh, Mike Geary, basically created that product way back in like 2005 or maybe even 2004. Right. By the time I found that it, it was 2007, late 2007, when I first started mm -hmm. um, ever, you know, doing this sort of thing. And um, since then, you know, it's become a, a great business for him and a lot of affiliates that promote it. Um, so it's just an ebook. It's it's training on how to you know he's a he's a personal trainer and it's just right. training about how to eat properly, how to work out, what kind of workouts to do, and it's gotcha. it's actually a great product. Well, you know, um, I remember uh, Tim Ferriss had a big blog about that 
about yeah. that whole thing. And it got a huge amount of comments. I know it was a very popular uh, post for his blog. Uh, right. people, are, people are just amazed that this guy's like traveling the world. Jeff, this, this guy is basically on vacation permanently. Am I wrong here, Mike? <laughs> no, that's 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 accurate. Um, so yeah, and you know the funny thing about that product, and I know that on on Tim Ferriss's post, um, it's a very polarizing topic, and you know half the people are like, "This is amazing, I love this idea," and then half the people are like, "Oh, this looks like a big scam," right, right, and you know, oh that that product, I mean. Who I would never have a website like that. Well, okay, I guess. I mean, if you don't want to make millions of dollars a year, right. you know, <laughs> I guess you, you know, don't need a website like that. So what, what do you think's behind that? I'm just curious. What's your thoughts? Like, people think it's a scam because they, they just feel like it's – that he's making all this money off of ebook. Are they upset that they didn't think of it? What, what do you think yeah. the issue is? I, I think the root of that – of that objection and that sort of that polarizing, you know, element that happens is I think that they're upset that they don't know how to do it and that um, somebody else is basically out there executing. Uh, and, and then they just have uh, people, just people have all sorts of weird concepts about, um, I don't know, about money for one thing and about, about just like it shouldn't be that easy to make right. that much money. To make money, that much right? money, right? That they don't feel like he's earned it. They don't feel like he's earned all that money and that he's just basically scamming people out. Maybe they feel yeah. like he should be giving it away or making it like five bucks each or some crazy thing like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. So, Jeff, so, what, uh, Jeff, uh, really briefly, not to interrupt, but Jeff, you were in the fitness space there for a while. What do you think of that, the whole ebook and making millions off of that? Yeah, no, it sounds like a smart way to go. I mean, it's an empowering way for the creators to get their stuff out there and monetize. Um, you know, Tim Ferriss's whole thing is pretty crazy. I don't, you know, I think um, you know people do approach it with kind of timid because uh, you know, like you said, I don't, I don't think he can be on permanent vacation while still actually working. Um, you know, the the two don't can't exist in the same space. Uh, you know, so it sounds nice, but I think he's doing a, you know more work than maybe he lets on to be. I don't know. Ah, that's yeah. a good point. What do you think? Do you think uh, Gary's actually putting a little bit more effort into this, or is he really not on? Really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think he's. I mean, yeah, with the first three years that he was building out that site, absolutely. I mean, he was working his butt off. He okay. he was an engineer also, okay. and he was you know after hours he was putting together this site, and for years and years and years, I think it was a, you know, a a lot of work. But I think at this point, um, I don't think it's as much work. Um, mm. At this point, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so uh, so you're helping promote this product. You're like looking at all these ads everywhere. You're probably manually doing it, maybe with an Excel spreadsheet or what have you. And then you thought, all right, you know, I need somebody to automate this. Is that right? Am I getting that? Yeah, well, what I thought was I realized that those ads were successful because I was seeing them all the time. And so then I started promoting that product as an affiliate. And sure enough, I made it work and started, you know, making a profit. And it was, you know, it was amazing at the time. And then I started realizing, okay, well, if there's this one product that I've found that it allows me to actually make enough money doing this to, to leave my full-time job, how many other products are out there like this that right. I'm just not even aware about, like yes. in markets that I just have no idea about, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. And so I wanted to, I just wanted the answer to that, really, you know, okay. and I had no way of knowing it, so, yeah, we devised this, this you know, this idea of just constantly crawling and looking for the ads and then assembling that into a, um, a database and a user interface that allows you to really, you know, gain, gain insight, right? Okay, so uh, just, just for those that don't know, I mean, what, what kind of paydays were you generating back in 2007? Uh, well, 2007, I started like December 2007, and um, I should mention just I, I started having success with paid advertising very quickly, um, but I spent a whole year before that trying to make money with SEO and all this stuff, and I made five dollars in the in the year previous to that. So, but very quickly when I found um, paid advertising, I started doing you know very in a few months I was you know making twenty thousand dollars a month, something like that. Wow, that's so great. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny, man. I talk to a lot of startup people, and Jeff and I, we interview these folks uh, every day, and uh, many of them are really uh, bullish on content marketing and trying to get inbound and all that kind of thing. Uh, what do you What do you say to the folks like that? I mean, do you think uh, – because it feels like people don't really want to give paid advertising its due, in my opinion. 
I, I just think most people don't understand it, and they maybe try it a little bit, and it just the numbers are way off, and they just think that it's um it's never gonna work, you know. Okay. And it scares them because it's a it's a hard cost that you can see going out the door. Right. Whereas SEO, it's just like this like constant like drain that you just never really quantify. Okay. You know, because you're wasting all this time on it, and 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 it's just harder to quantify. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a woman on yesterday, and she developed this product for Yoga Studios as a membership, sort of like a manage your own studio kind of thing. And I'd I'd actually asked her. I was like, so uh, have you tried doing pay per click or any sort of paid banner that kind of thing? She said, yeah, we experimented with it early, but uh, the ROI just wasn't there. And I've heard this not just from her, but from many startup founders that kind of dip their toe in or maybe even put a f half a foot in. Uh, would you think something like an ad beat would help them in, th in that circumstance? Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what the product is, but it, it certainly could potentially, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure that every single product can be sold through paid advertising. However, with the Google Display Network, uh, which is kind of a unique advertising channel uh, versus everything else that's out there, um, I kind of do think almost anything can be sold with the proper the proper funnel setup. Okay. So, excuse me. Um, that means, you know, the proper landing page, the the proper follow up sequence. If you're not going for a sale directly and all that kind of stuff, um, okay. I, I think almost anything can work. Wow. So you're pretty bullish on it. Yeah. You know, maybe uh, well, in the instance yesterday, maybe they were forgetting to do the follow up. You know, which was something they were doing in other parts of their marketing, but you right. know, for paid search, it makes equal amount of sense. Yeah. to uh, continue the conversation. You know, I know we can talk about retargeting as well. Um, <clears throat> I think that would help them as well. But, you know, I, we do hear these entrepreneurs, like, really timid about paper um, click because they feel like they have to continually feed that fire. Yeah, that's what like, we hear you know, a lot. They have, to, they have to keep paying for it, whereas with content marketing, they put an article on their blog that's going to, you know, pay off over the next two years potentially. You know, what do you, what do you uh, how do you, uh, you know, approach that sort of uh, thinking from, from entrepreneurs? You know, I, I'm not. A, I mean, I'm not against content marketing. So if 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 anything, I just don't have enough experience with it to really um, comment on it intelligently. Um, I just think that you you definitely shouldn't you know discount um, paid paid channels. And it's it's generally not a, a it, like it doesn't work. It's there's so many factors. There's there's the ad. There's where do you place that ad? There's what does the landing page look like? What is the following page? Any one of those points in that funnel. Could, can have a multiplying effect of two to three x on the results, and when you look at that, and you look at four or five points in that funnel that have a multiplier there, it's right. so it's really easy to see how it cannot work, right? Oh, if, I see. Yeah. if you don't have one of those elements correct, because even when it all works great, you know maybe you only are operating your your margins are are, are slim, you know. Okay. Um, and so if one of those things is off, it's just not going to work. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So you really need a really optimized all the way through if you're going to start paying for this traffic, so to speak. Yeah, and you need, you know, generally you need you need a little bit of a budget to do that because you need the traffic to help optimize it, right? Gotcha. So that's um, by the way, that's one of the things that's great about paid traffic is that it's a steady source of traffic, and it does allow you to kind of have a constant source for split testing various parts of your of your process, whether that's a sign up to a trial, you know, what happens after they sign up to a trial, if, you know, in the case of a software type product or or whatever. Gotcha. Whereas yeah. SEO can be maybe more up and down, I think, and you're getting traffic from different keywords that, you know, depending on the keyword, it's going to have a different effect and all that. Right, right. Yeah, like if you have a popular blog post, it might get pop, it might peak in popularity because someone shared it and that traffic yeah. dies down, and you can't really run a whole lot of tests against that. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Mike, uh, before we get into AdBeat, I just want to, again, go back when you were scratching the itch, you thought about making this software. How did you go about that? I mean, uh, did you outsource it uh, to somewhere, you know? Where, how did you go about building it? I know you're in San Francisco. It's really expensive. Talent around here is not cheap. Uh, did you, did, you're an engineer. Uh, yeah. Did you, did you spec it out? How did you go about doing that? So I wasn't in San Francisco at the time. I was in Arizona at the time uh, in Phoenix. And um, I basically, I'm not, so I'm an engineer. I have an engineering background. I don't, I don't code. I'm not a software guy. Um, I've never coded a single part of the front end or the back end for AdBeat. 
Uh, I've done a fair amount of wireframing, so you know I've definitely been involved in the the product vision, um, but you know no coding myself. So I, man, let me think. How I I just started looking on Odesk, okay. and um, I I had outsourced a couple tiny projects at that point, like you know projects that are on the order of a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars, you know, right, right, and right. I had gotten those accomplished. That honestly, that little success is is really sort of what what really allowed me to decide to move forward because I had I had spec'd out some very simple a uh, very simple script that I needed to kind of scrape keywords and this sort of stuff. Right. And I you know I got it done and I got it done for you know a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty bucks, right. and that sort of made me think you know hey maybe I could do this with something bigger right. Right. Okay. And um and so I started you know checking on Odesk and I found um I I found you know one or two people and I found a guy in China, found another guy in Ukraine. And um, hired them both essentially pretty quickly together, and then just um, started explaining what I wanted. And um, I mean, it's a, I, I, I really you can't I cannot overstate how little I knew about <laughs> developing software. Like I was saying to these guys, you know, like, can you make it where it shows up, you know, in the browser, not you know, on your desktop? You know what I mean? And like, I didn't even know like. How to call that like a web app? You know what I mean. Yeah, like, okay. um, so that's kind of the level that I was at when I was starting with this stuff. That's um, awesome. It, and just before that, um, when you were scratching your own itch, when did you decide that the uh, you know whatever tools you had, the scripts or whatever the product was, when did you decide this product was bigger than your own problem, and that others you know that you wanted to uh, offer the solution to others? I would say, I mean, I knew from the beginning it was really bigger than than my own problem because there were there were services out there that did this the same basic idea for search ads, right? So there was already you know um, SpyFu, I guess, or yeah. some, you know maybe one or two other of these search products, mm -hmm. um, and there were even actually products that were that were uh, that kind of did what I had envisioned, but they sold at a you know twenty five thousand dollar a year price point, and they were out of my range. Um, and I figured if they were out of my range, and plus I demoed those products. I like you know went through a demo call, and I wasn't really impressed with what I saw. Like I knew it could be done a lot better. Okay. And um, and the couple that coupled with the fact that I knew that price point was out of my range, and there were probably a lot of other people that felt the same way. Um, you know, I decided to to just move forward. But I I really I knew that I could use it myself before anybody else did anyway. So that kind of also gave me the I felt like the development costs were not like I was going to get benefit from it early on right. before it was even selling in the marketplace. Right. And in fact, that that absolutely did happen. And I used I used the data before we even launched it to go out and 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 make more money so that I could continue to build the software. Right. And right. It kind right. of. Yeah. So g give us give us some of those early uh, like uh, you you started collecting all this data. All these bots are out there scraping all this stuff. Uh, what other? I mean, I, you were doing the 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 six pack ab thing. What what other I, products did you end up like? Oh wow, this is kind of cool. These guys are doing this. This is interesting. I'm learning this because of my software. What other things did you attack? I mean, mostly stuff in the in the fitness niche because I just I I already kind of understood that market. Uh, and so various, uh, basically, I've I've promoted as an affiliate. I mean, I think every major ClickBank, you know, fitness product that's come out in the last five years, you know. Okay. So every time there would be a new product out that was doing well, I would jump on that and, and start doing pretty well with it. Right. Um, and I'm trying to think, I mean, that's that's really where most of the affiliate stuff that I've done. Gotcha. Uh, but you know, there's there's all sorts of other markets. I started kind of seeing the various comparison sites and um, different types of more advanced affiliate models, I guess, is okay. what the way I would describe them. Well, give us an example uh, of a more advanced affiliate model. Hmm. Um, you know, maybe a coupon site. Okay. Um, you know, one of these sites that uh, I don't even really know, you know, some of the names. I'm not, I'm not, I don't really do anything in that space, but there's plenty of coupon sites that mm -hmm. right. spend considerable amounts on paid advertising, uh, right. driving traffic to these pages of, of coupons. Gotcha. gotcha. Interesting. I, I think, you know, AdBeat is a web crawler, right? You're scraping all of, you know, these sites for intelligence, I think is just a tremendous, um, 
you know, idea and concept. What were some of the early, like, things that you, you didn't expect to discover, like kind of seeing these different categories, or how, how was it on the actual technical end, you know, letting this spider go crawl the internet? Did you have it focus on certain areas and domains and, you know, uh, keywords, or how, how did you control the growth of that? I mean, how do we decide what to crawl? We basically, the, the, the how we decide what to crawl by basically, I'm, I'm trying to capture as much as possible what's truly happening uh, on the internet, so generally that means focus on the the higher traffic sites because that captures the largest percentage of what's really happening. And there's there's just cost, you know, and technical limitations on well, we can't crawl the whole web like Google. Right. Yeah, I'd right. imagine. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, how do you? Yeah. yeah, how do you? How do you? Do you just do the top ten thousand? Is that is that the way you do it? Or we we crawl well over a hundred thousand sites at this point. I don't even know the total number, but we're we have we're, we have servers in twenty one different countries at this point, and um, you know crawl a number of sites in each country. So yes, yeah, it's, it's when we started though. I'll tell you when we started. We started with three thousand sites, okay. um, and I think we even launched with maybe three thousand sites. We may have had like twelve thousand or something when we launched, but uh, what much much less than what we have now. You know, wow, yeah. so, uh, hundred thousand sites all around the country. I, uh, are you are there are there some interesting like uh, you would have never guessed what's really killing it over in the Middle East or are there any cool uh, uh, products or services you're seeing internationally that you want to share? You know, I don't. I honestly don't have enough time to get in there and just kind of browse through. Like when we when we bring up a new country, I'll spend a few minutes in there just to browse and just kind of check out what I see. Right. And I'm always kind of surprised that there's, you know there'll be a few things. There'll be some you know Japanese weight loss site that I have just have no idea what's even on it, but I know it's about weight loss. You know, just okay. because you can just tell from the photos and things. Right. right. Um. So it's kind of fun. I mean, I, if you're into advertising, to me it's fun. When when we first when we were first getting, you know, getting this data in, I would spend hours and hours in, in there just looking yeah. at things and yeah. just and learning about what was happening. And I mean, some of the interesting things early on were um, before we even launched. Um, you could see, um, you could see Bing's gigantic advertising campaign uh, whenever they, uh, whenever they kind of branded and launched Bing, and it was like right. they had, you know, they, I think they had a hundred million dollars. Wow. Or something to spend on advertising, and you could see that That's clearly it. in AdBeat because there was oh. they were basically the largest advertiser on you know many different ad networks just all over the place, and that was kind of fascinating to see that. Right. Um, it was fascinating to see Groupon. Um, at one point, Groupon was um, based on our estimates spending five times as much as Google was on their own network. So Google obviously doesn't pay for the ads on their own network. But they have huge aver the equivalent of huge advertising spends promoting Chrome and and various Google services and Groupon was just blowing that out of the water. They were just so wow. far and away, like advertising more than any other advertiser. It was just amazing to actually see that. Wow. And um, you know, it really was just. It was really cool to see, but you know, of course, they had tons of money to spend. So, what uh, you know, I really quickly here is I don't want to go down this path too far, but what do you think? I mean, Groupon. I mean, uh, Andrew being kicked out. I mean, these these you're you're in you're in San Francisco. You see these guys, these big startups and the, you know, the big raises on TechCrunch. I mean, uh, what's your insider point of view on on all this stuff? Do you think these guys half the time they're just trying to get a bunch of money so they can throw it in ads? Do you see that a lot? I, you know, I honest, I, I moved here to be part of more of like the part of the startup, you know, ecosystem and, and everything that's happening in Silicon Valley. But the more that I got into it, the more I started thinking like, I don't really know if this is all really quite in alignment with sort of the type of business that I want to build. Um, so you know, we're we're totally bootstrapped, and um, I, you know, I, obviously, I think it's a good idea for for some people to raise money. But I, some of the stuff I see, I just just doesn't fit with what I really want out of building a business personally, um, so I don't I don't really know what to say about it. At, at, at the same time, I'm a little bit jealous, you know, because I like look and you know it would be nice to just have tens of millions of dollars in the yeah, bank, to yeah. not have to worry and all this stuff. Right. So I don't know. It's 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 fascinating though. It's really it's pretty interesting watching it all unfold. Well, yeah, so I, I love that you mentioned, uh, or you you came from Phoenix. Can you, can you tell us uh, when you decided to move from there, or how that worked in building the team? 
I so you know we I moved here before we even launched the product, but we'd been okay. probably developing it for a, a good solid year or so. And um, I let me think. Um, I I decided to move here because I I thought that it it would make it, I just wanted to be around more people that were building software businesses, mm -hmm. and it just I felt out of touch, you know, with with that element in Phoenix. Gotcha. Uh, and so it just kind of made sense for me. And uh, but I also thought that I would, you know, if I wanted to raise money, that this is where I should be. Um, so you I, did. You did at one point want to raise money. Is that what? Is that right? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, well, I, I didn't really want to. I just thought that maybe I would need to, or maybe I should. You know, it wasn't really like that's what I'm going to definitely do ever. It's always just been I've read an you know ton of information about raising money. Yeah. I could probably you know tell you all sorts of things about raising money. You know, but okay. I've never I've never actually pulled the trigger and said, okay, I'm actually going to go do this and try to raise money. Well, look, I just um, I just find it crazy, man. You're like an expert in media buying. You have all these crazy tools. But you're not using it for AdBeat. It's just kind of ironic. I just have to say. What do you mean not using it for AdBeat? Oh, are you are you are you spending a lot of ad advertising, like paid tr traffic for? Ad oh, paid traffic for AdBeat. Yeah. Um, we we do some Facebook advertising. We're not doing um we're not doing much else for advertising right now. That's honestly that's just a case of the you know the cobbler's kid has no shoes uh, okay. kind of situation <laughs> where I'm just busy doing like a million other things and. Okay. I haven't had time to focus on it, but uh, we do we do do some advertising and we do some retargeting and okay. um, so yeah. Huh. Interesting. But I could spend more time on it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Just curious about that. Um, all right. So let's talk a little about AdBeat. So how many people you got on your team right now? That focus on AdBeat. Uh, I would say about eight really. Okay. Uh, and we kind of have a we have a bigger team that works on some other things. Okay. Um, so a total team of more like 15 to 16. All right, and, and obviously Jeff and I saw you at the uh, at the ad tech show, so uh, you're out there hustling, trying to get some more customers. Who, who, who do you find are like your ideal customers? Is it the ad agencies, brands? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's anybody that's involved with display advertising is a potential customer uh, because we kind of hit on different use cases depending on, on who you are. The agencies certainly Agencies get a lot of use out of our product because, you know, it they can they have access to like all these different markets and so they can go in for any particular client and check out what's going on. Right. <clears throat> but um, an individual marketer or a, an in-house uh, marketer for a for a startup, for instance, okay. um, you know, definitely uh, could could use our product. Um, certainly brands, um, even technology providers like ad networks. Okay. Um, or other ad tech type of providers or customers. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, since we're talking about AdBeat, do you mind cutting over to AdBeat and let's just quickly t do a quick tour? Sure. Uh, let me make sure I see screen share and... All right. And there we go. Is this it? Yep. We're good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. right. So, uh, all right. So here, here we are. The, this we're looking at a list of top advertisers. Right. Uh, it looks like Full Sail. They do education. A lot of these for-profit schools. Huh? They got money to spend, apparently. Yeah. No, they're huge spenders for display. They're some of the largest spenders for display ads that, that are out there. Okay. That's interesting. Yep. So, what do we? We have a. We have a. Looks like a web startup. There's Zully. Is that right? Is, Zulily is aren't they like a deal site for for kids or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, but I think it's not a brick and mortar, right? Isn't this a uh, pure web, Jeff? What do you think? I'm not sure. I'd have to yeah. check them out. Yeah, yeah, it's daily. It's like daily deals for women. I think is what it is. Okay. So hmm. what are we, what are we looking at here, Jeff, uh, um, Mike? So we we've got all your images of all the ads. So can walk us through this really briefly. Well, the dashboard here it, it basically. I mean, I mean, I switched screens on you here, but the dashboard is kind of an overview of what's going on. So we can see that they're primarily spending on the uh, Google Display Network. Okay. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other ad networks here: Advertising.com, MSN Display, um, Direct Buy means they're buying traffic directly from a website, so they're cutting a deal directly with the site. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we have um, something that we call the similar advertisers, where we can pick out advertisers that are similar to, to Zulily, 
And yeah. so we've kind of identified Totsi, um, Plum District, uh, ideally, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Right. Um, so these are advertisers that are similar based on some analysis that we do of the ads and the pages uh, that the ads point to, that sort of thing. Right. Um, and then these are the publishers that they're showing up on. So these are the websites where they're act their ads are actually showing on. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right, um, and there's a bunch of other kind of summary information on this page that just tells you, you know, over time how have they been spending money on which ad networks, um, that sort of thing. And then on the the top ads page we were on before, this is going to show you the actual creatives, mm -hmm. uh, and you can even go through and click through to see the landing pages if you wanted um, that the creative points to. Gotcha. How, how, is there, how would we be able to see A-B split tests and be able to see previous ads? Is there any way to do that? Uh, sometimes you can kind of see a, that a split test is happening just because uh, basically you'll see that they launch the ad on the same day and it may look similar to another ad okay. um, but with some copy changed. Right, right. Um, for instance, I mean, here's a good example actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, this ad with the woman looking down and this ad where she's looking up. Right. Um, right. I would imagine that that's, that's a split test of sorts. Um, right. You can kind right. of pick that out sometimes. Wow. This is interesting. So um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm I not sure, but I think Zully did raise a lot of money. So clearly they're spending that, that yeah. investor raise on ads. I mean, they're... Uh, a lot of it, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, how much do you think you're based on your dashboard? Or what do you think? What do you think their monthly spend is on based on what you're seeing? Um, you know, for some reason, this this. Hold on a second. I can actually tell you what we, what we estimate. Okay. So, Zulily, we're estimating um, eighteen million in the last six months, so three okay. million a month. Three million a month. Wow. Three million a month. How would we guess? Like, what do you think there are their conversions are? Is there any way to figure that out? Based Not really. No. I mean, there's really no way we can we can really guess that. Okay. Um, I guess they're just driving to probably an email opt-in, very similar to the Groupon kind of. Yeah. Model, we can check out a landing page yeah. and see. Let's mm -hmm. check it out, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, Enter they email. This, yeah, they do this like um this is what there's a couple of these deal sites that do this where it's like locked content until you enter your email. Right. Uh, yeah. No yeah, way yeah. to get around it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so um really briefly here, uh, clearly uh this must be working for them because they're spending a lot of money on this. Um aren't I mean what's your Thoughts on the fact that uh, Groupon, you know, burned and crashed, or not burned and crashed, but is having a hard time, and yet these guys are, it looks like they're doing something very similar. Uh, you know, I really, I really don't, I really don't know. It's it's hard to say that it's really working because Groupon looked like this for a long time, right? They were just, you know, pouring money into advertising, and um, they they've cut back considerably on that. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's hard to say that this is really working without you know knowing their internal numbers, but um, right. you know, I, I don't know. Maybe the fact that this is much more targeted. Right. Um, Groupon, I think part of the problem with Groupon from just I've just anecdotal evidence and you know re reading and things on online, yep. it just seemed like a lot of people felt like they sort of started tuning out because they would buy things that weren't really that they would never use the Groupon after they bought it and mm, yeah. you know yeah. it wasn't really targeted to them. Whereas this is probably much more targeted to you know, this demographic, daily right. deals for moms, babies, and kids. Babies and kids. And I've also noticed yeah. a lot of the creatives have heavy set women in them. Maybe that's a big, big market that they're seeing it's underserved, you know? Could be, yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. sure. It does yeah, say all, it also, what does it say? Uh, shapes of all sizes or all sizes, all shapes and all like that? All sizes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, does so, it say that? Yeah, in the ad, in the, in the, creative, <laughs> in the creative, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So that could be it, man. Maybe there's just a lot of heavy set women that are just like, yeah, who knows? Could be. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, clearly, look at look how much money they're spending, Mike. Something's working <laughs> here, my man. Something is yeah. working. How yeah. much money have they raised? I don't know. I, I don't, actually think I, think I think they are doing well from some stuff I've read, but I I, I don't really pay attention. But I I think I remember reading something. Yeah, that no, no, I do remember. Like reading. Well. Yeah, they they did raise a good chunk, so I would imagine they probably uh yeah, if it was you know. I, 
thin models are usually the you know usually the what they put in ads. So this is definitely not your typical. Yeah. Right. It's so. just you know it's really hard to know even when you read all this stuff it's hard to know if a company's really doing well if they've raised so much money that it's just impossible to know because part of that money is going into a bunch of you know PR spin right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it. yeah, yeah. it's just you just never really know until the dust settles you know right, right. five years later. Right. And the, <laughs> and the CEO is ousted and there's all this like flack. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, let's go back to the dashboard. Let's check out some other ones. Uh, some other advertisers? Yeah, some other advertisers, yeah. Specifically startups, well, ideally, or web-based. Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 you can, I did this search earlier. We can actually, let me do this again. Um, okay. You know, say you were say you were a company, okay. right? A company who's going to provide some sort of a, you know, um, SaaS solution help desk. You could just do a search for help desk, okay. and you could find all of these help desk advertisers and just kind of check out and see what they're doing. Oh, so very cool. You know, you can see everything desk.com is doing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zendesk. Oh, great! So now we see all their actual copy that they're using. Yeah. Looks like you have text ads as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of text ads here. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. They're using some different traffic sources. Uh, look at Zendesk. Okay. So we're, kind now, of the common. can you talk briefly about the trend lines? I'm seeing some spikes, and then I'm seeing them go down. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So this is basically a representation over time. So this is a six month timeline that you're looking at here, and you know basically you can see from that that there was a lot of activity in the last month or so, and not that much activity. Uh, earlier on for this particular ad here along the top. Okay. Mm. Um, and we show trend lines for, you know, not just the individual ads, but for the, you know, the advertiser on the whole on the dashboard. So if we click through here and we come down here, you can see the trend line for Zendesk um, over the last six months as a whole. So this is all the ads added up together. Interesting. Um, so you can look at that, you know, weekly or monthly. Oh, wow. That's great. And so we yeah. can we can we can say listen if we're going to try to make a help desk type of software similar to what Zendesk is doing we could theoretically use AdBeat and go to and see what publishers are running the ads and and possibly even connect with them directly if we want to bypass the networks themselves. Sure. Yeah, and there's you know you may not even want to look at Zendesk cuz they're kind of this huge company. You may want to look at some of these smaller ones that yeah. we're picking out here. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the things I would do probably if that's if you're you know if I was a startup and I was developing some help desk software, um, more than just where to advertise, I would look at their their funnel here. So what is the what does the the landing page look like? Yeah, this is important. You you brought this up earlier in the interview that there's a lot of opportunity to screw up here, right? Yeah, for sure. So I it's don't know. Great to look at what other people have done and are doing well. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, here they may just be driving to the home page. Let me let me try to let me see. Hmm. Yeah, it is the home. So it looks like they're yeah, actually wow. just driving to the home page, which is um, kind of interesting in itself. Um, generally, that's you know not always a great strategy, but maybe if your home page is set up properly, it's it's not terrible. That and maybe if you've got a lot of money to burn. That's the other thing, right? Yeah. So that's why you don't necessarily want to watch so, someone like Zendesk. Yeah, you may yeah. want to take a look at some smaller guys. Smaller guys, gotcha. Fresh Desk. Okay, let's take a look at them. Hmm. So this isn't, at least this isn't the the home page. Right. Okay. Huh. Well, this is this is very different. Let me see what their homepage looks like. Yeah. So that right there is interesting in itself, right? Because you may never find that page without AdBeat. Right. Because it's it's not necessarily linked to from their homepage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So they they may have figured out that that particular this format works really well for cold display traffic. It comes from the ads. Gotcha, gotcha. With the testimonials, and then your eyes kind of lean right to the left there, you know. So that's where they got the form. Yeah, so. this is an interesting format. I've never quite seen a landing page quite like this. So yeah, it's this is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your feeling on this, Mike? 
Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm I I'm all about testing. So it's it's not. I mean, it's, I would certainly throw this into a test. It doesn't scream like terrible to me in any way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's really clean and um, it's different, which may be enough to kind of cause people to just take notice in itself. You know. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, can we cover a couple of act- couple more? Uh, other advertisers. Yeah. Other sure. advertisers. Yeah. Help desk or something else? Something else, yeah, maybe a different category. Um, Jeff, you have anybody in mind? Um, uh, no, nothing at the top of my you, head. So, I, I was, I was uh, sorry to interrupt. Time tracking? Okay. Yeah, it's another good one. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So, I don't know, do any of these look I, interesting? I've heard of yeah. Get Harvest, yeah. I've heard yeah. of these guys, yeah. I was going to say, I wonder if 37 Signals, those Rails guys, if they... If they well, you know, they're huge on content marketing, so it wouldn't surprise me if they don't even show up, you know, at all. Gotcha. Because mm-hmm. um, that's kind of their angle. They do yeah. it really, really well. They do, yeah. Um, but, you know, this is this could be interesting. I don't know. Let's see what they're doing. Okay, so they're spending about eight grand for the last, it looks like for the last couple of months here. Look here, monthly. So last few months, uh, they've been spending a few thousand a month for a couple months straight. Okay. Um, so generally, I would want to see a, a trend that was longer than this, you know, just to be sure. But um, a couple months isn't that much, especially at this ad spend. They could just be kind of testing with a budget. It's it's hard to say that this is necessarily working. Okay. Uh, for them, but um, if you know if this was running for six months or more, I would have more confidence in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, if you know, if you know, if you have enough experience, with, say you're selling a you know a monthly subscription type product, if you have enough experience with you know driving cold traffic from other means, and you know that so many signups result in so many customers, and those customers stick for so many months, then you can you can probably start estimating how your ad ad spend is doing fairly quickly right. by just the signups, right? Gotcha. So the lifetime could be a lot longer than what we were seeing here. So maybe they're they're doing okay. You never know. They yeah, they could be. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So in your in your opinion, um uh, uh media buying or rather paid traffic is definitely something that a some sm- small startup should consider. I, for a small startup, I highly recommend the Google Display Network um, and potentially Facebook because of the just uh, unbelievable targeting options for for both of those. Uh, mm-hmm. Facebook with the interest targeting, okay. and then Google Display with the keyword or site targeting can can get you some really great results. Okay, so let's go to top publishers on this one right here. So when you click on top publishers next to top ads. Mm-hmm. You can actually see what their what sites they're on, and theoretically, we can reach out to FileBuzz.com or some of these other sites, and maybe get my my help desk competitor app on there, right? Yeah, but you don't even necessarily need to reach out to the to the advertisers. I would recommend just just trying the traffic channel that these are on. Probably these are mostly through Google Display Network. Okay. okay. Um, so I just filtered on Google. So these are now what we're looking at are all sites that are reached through the Google Display Network. Okay. Um, and then here, if we wanted to look at the other ad network they're using is Buy, Sell, Ads. Buy, Sell, Ads, um, yeah. And here's the sites for Buy, Sell, Ads. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, there we are. For, you know, uh, I, for, I've got a – sorry, yeah. I, I just thought of a, um, an interesting one that a lot of people will probably know. Um, why don't we look at Bingo Card Creator? Yeah, Bingo Card Creator, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is what you want to see, right? A consistent showing for an ad for six months straight. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I have high confidence that this that this is working. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So this is you know very small startup, small revenue, but advertising is working, right, on yeah. the Google Display Network. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So, as a um, as a startup or as like a uh, advertising novice, how what other insights do you have into the ad networks? Like Google seems to have you know most of the share, but obviously you're tracking a bunch of other ad networks and they're being used. You know what what insights can I get as to I guess just what ad networks I should try out, or is it worth my time, or should I just be on Google, uh, or like Amul mentioned, going direct to the you know the publishers. 
Um, I would for for most for most people with a kind of a startup to advertise, I would focus on Google, Facebook, uh, potentially buy sell ads. Buy sell ads has some interesting kind of very specific inventory. Um, that is a lot of um, kind of sites that are targeted towards the design community. Okay. Um, right. And so if you have a product that is kind of targeted towards that community also, like time tracking, mm -hmm. for instance, gotcha. um, you know, it could do well on that network specifically. Gotcha. Can we uh, look for one more? I want to see how Weebly's doing. I know Weebly's uh, the web, you know, kind of make your own website. Uh, they're... They've been around is for a while. The, they're kind of are they new, relatively new? No, they've been space? they've been around for a long time. I just want okay. to see how they're doing. I see hmm. Well, there's Homestead, there's Webs. Yeah, yeah, I see Wix. Yeah, competitor. Wix is yeah. another competitor. Yeah, this is great. So if I'm building my own build your own website product, yeah. See exactly what's going on. Mm hmm Wow. This is a really great. Yeah. Um, well, thanks. Thanks for that tour, uh, Mike. I think that uh, that gives people a, a taste of what's going on. Great. Let me click. There's back so on. so much intelligence and stuff built in there that you could just you know spend hours clicking yeah. around and doing yeah. your research and due diligence and competitive analysis and the rest. If of you're it. into this stuff, it's it's easy to get lost in there for a while and just kind of just just yeah just kind of browse and just see what you find. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, and I know on one of your webinars you 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 get, had a little screenshot where you signed up for some of these services and then you'll use a throwaway Google name or or a, a G Gmail that you're not using for your personal and then you'll just track to see what kind of emails they're sending what you know what kind of sequence they're sending out to you and and learning from how all these individuals are marketing i thought that was brilliant yeah and i i, I mean i do that today and if i mean if you're a startup and you want to know how to come up with a free trial sequence, you know, go sign up for some of the best, you know, SaaS offerings um, in the last few years and see what happens when you sign up for a trial, see what emails you get. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that's that's a great a great thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. So what's next for you, Mike? I mean, uh, where do you see AdBeat going? What's your what's what's the roadmap looking like for the next year? Uh jeez, I don't know. We're just like just kind of head down, still just building out the product, um, adding new features, new countries. Um, mobile traffic uh, has been a big thing that we've added in the last um, year or so. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I don't know. We're just, we're just adding new features. Uh, there's, there's just so much, especially with the data visualization. So mm -hmm. we have an amazing amount of data now, and we could actually probably double the value of that data by just building out front end stuff that wasn't even changing really what's happening on the back end, you know. So there's right. kind of going to be a big push for us to to improve on that. G over give, me, the next year. give me an example. What what would you like to see visual what would you like to visualize that you're not doing now? Well, you know, things like comparing advertisers, groups of advertisers, for instance, is can be something that's really valuable that um, we actually do have some functionality built in that's starting to, to do that at this point. Okay. Um, that's you know that's maybe one case um, changing the way that the data is displayed um, you know kind of being able to look at say smartphones and tablets versus desktop kind of all in one view rather than right now we kind of have it all separate gotcha. so you know you have to kind of look at them separately just you know simple things like that that are actually really valuable to an end user even though all the data is in there right now and they can get to it Right. It's this is all about saving you time, right? So, yeah. the less steps that someone has to go through to get what they want, the better. Right, right. What other trends are you seeing in the ad tech uh, in general? Like mobile is obviously huge. Uh, it's got to be really difficult to get the intelligence on those, right? Because a lot of it's in native apps. I think uh, you mentioned Facebook and things like retargeting. You know, what do you, what's real hot right now and uh, up and coming? I mean, you know, re retargeting is still big. I mean, I'm I'm amazed at the success of some of these retargeting platforms. It's such a simple thing, actually. It's not even a complicated like, <laughs> like like product, in my opinion, really. Right. And and but uh, maybe maybe I'm naive on that, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not that not well, that complicated. 
and there's I, some I don't know about that Mike we had uh, Adam Burke from one of the co-founders of Adroll on here yeah and they're growing like weeds out there man I know I mean, they're he's killing it man I know, uh, I know. It's amazing. we spoke with Arjun from retargeter yeah and... we talked to yeah. Arjun from retargeter yeah yeah they're killing it man so retargeting seems to be the hot yeah thing. There, it seems like there's a lot of options and knobs and levers that you can actually pull on on the uh, settings there too yeah no I it's it's hot I totally agree I'm just I'm kind of amazed that that it's that all of these companies together there's you know retargeters doing well Ad adroll's doing well perfect audience is doing well mm -hmm. you know all of them are doing well and they're all just doing retargeting and it's kind of you know um, I don't know it's just interesting to watch just because I'm in the ad tech space and mm -hmm. right. um, but certainly I mean retargeting is a is a is a great technology and we use it for adbeat for instance and mm -hmm. I startups should use retargeting for sure okay. um, especially the higher value the customer the more you should be using it Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, you know, I know uh, we've had you on here for more than an hour, so I'm gonna uh, we're gonna g close it here now. Um, if people want to get a hold of you through Adbeat or however, what's a good general email or something you feel comfortable letting people know? Um, you know, for general questions about Adbeat, support at adbeat.com is the best. If someone really has a question for me specifically, um, then Mike at adbeat.com. Okay, and and if you know, for guys that are watching this, that are entrepreneurs and their nine to five grind, what would you tell? Uh, what would any p last parting advice? That are out there living in Phoenix or somewhere not surrounded by software developers. Yeah. And like, stick it out. Doesn't happen overnight. That's that's probably that's probably my best <laughs> advice. Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Well, Mike, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. This has been really great. Thanks. Yeah, it was great having you on the show. Thanks so much, guys. All right. All right.